Good morning, Grand Rising. I am so excited this morning to have each and every one of you here this morning. I am so excited that we are now getting more people into our meetings. And so with that being said, uh, last week, we introduced our new season and unpacked the topic is our faith predetermined. And today our series continues as SRC masterminds unpack the topic, understanding and identifying how energy, how your energy is given to pendulums. And I'm looking forward to that conversation today. Now, before we go any further, I just like to welcome our SRC masterminds. And we have with us again today, we have Mark Thomas, we have this Kina Lows, we have Pastor, I mean, Pastor, we have Brother Lavelle Rouser, and I know that Pastor Archie Sanders is on his way. Now, we also want to welcome our audience. We want to welcome our good audience. As always, we welcome you to participate in the conversation on the table. If you want to contribute, raise your hand, unmute your mic, and join in the conversation. Let us welcome our uh, guest this morning. Thank you. Now, as I mentioned today, our topic is understanding and identifying power that's given to pendulums. And the passage of scripture that we are basing this conversation is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 39. And it states, But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, everybody knows what time it is. And it is time for you to use the link that, I, that you use to get into this meeting and send that link to your family and friends because I promise you, this is going to be so good regardless of all the challenges that we decided not to face this morning, this is going to be a really, really, really good meeting. So I want everyone to make sure that you invite all your friends and family to this meeting. But before we move any further, let me make sure that I'm clear about a couple of things. The scripture that I just shared with you is in no way suggesting that you allow someone to smite or in other words, hit you. I must tell you, if that's the case with that scripture, <laughs> I, 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 I'll be losing the whole time because I'm not there yet to allow someone to just hit me and then turn the other cheek and let them not me hit me on that cheek either. Now, I know that those who wrote that scripture rewrote the Bible and they did it to serve their own purposes. Those groups wanted, wanted those that they perceived to be in a lower class to believe that the other cheek should be turned when they were enslaving or beating the crap out of those who were yet still asleep and had not come into their knowledge and, and their inner power. So just keep that in mind because when SRC shares the scripture, we have dug deep to discover its original intent. And that scripture is in no way telling you to allow someone to beat the crap out of you. It just doesn't, it's not about that. What this verse does say to us, it alerts us not to resist those things, that, not to resist those things that do not serve us well or that will cause us harm. This scripture is alerting us not to give up our energy. Think about this. When you resist anything, you are using your energy. Like just this morning, resisting all those people that were coming into our meeting. Guess what? It took a lot of energy for me. It took a lot of energy for me to do what I was doing to resist what was happening. But without your energy, those things you do not want in your lives can't live in your world. It cannot thrive in your world when you don't give it your energy. That scripture reminds us to turn away what we did this morning. We turned away 
from those things that we didn't want to harvest in our life. We didn't want to harvest in our broadcast. In other words, resist giving up your energy when you can. Now, how can we resist giving up our energy in the future? By being very careful who we allow into these broadcasts, right? So in our last broadcast, we didn't have a chance to really discuss those battles that have been going on for as long as we can remember. Therefore, today we want to examine some of those battles and conclude if the battles provided an expected end for people. And then we're going to move right into what may be causing individuals not to receive their expected end. In other words, what power or energy are we allowing to, allowing to be sucked away from us? And who or what is harvesting that energy? We want to take a real close look at those battles. And one of the battles that come to mind for me is the resistance to the evil of racism. But let's just call racism what it really is. Racism is really hate. So we've been resisting hate for as long as I can remember. Ever since I was a little girl, we were resisting hate. And we still are. We've marched and, and people have been killed on the battlefield of hate just because they were resisting it. Yet, still in the year of 2022, hate is still prevalent. In fact, it has even gained momentum. So, Brother Lavelle, what are some of the battles that you recognize as still being fought, yet the battles have not yielded the expected end? Brother Lavelle. Um. Greetings and good morning, SRC and everyone. Um, what I see is some of the battles. The first initial battle that I see is the conflict or the battle within ourselves. Okay. And uh, some of us wrestle with that each and every day of our life. And so that is an, is an important area that must be addressed. Because if it's not addressed, then there will be the tendency for the person who is struggling, battling, conflicting with themselves to project that out to other people, even to those people that are willing to assist and to help them to overcome that internal battle that rages from within. So that's one of the, one of, one of the major things that I see that has to be has to be dealt with with each and every one of us. It can be as some, it can be as simple as something that happened to you 30, 40, 50 years ago, and you are still uh, in conflict with it. And you seek to blame others for what has happened. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct about that. So what, what you're saying, Brother Lavelle, is that the first battle that we must deal with is the battle that is within ourselves. And also, again, there are, battle, there are battles that we join in that we think are going to change something, gonna, it's going to change the way other people feel about us. But has those, for instance, let's just look at the, ba the battle of racism or the battle of, of hate. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm defining racism as really hate has trying to go out and get people to not be racist, not hate, has that changed our, the, uh, has that changed the end result at all? How has that helped us? But what it has done, I believe, it has given more energy to that whole conflict, hasn't it? When that, and that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about is joining in these battles and doing these things, you know, cause I'm, listen, I was one of the people that, and, and, you know, anything that was, you know, like, let's fight for the people, let's do this and let's, you know, and I, I've done that all my life. I was a member of the Black Panthers and all those things. And, and, and when I think about it, what has it got for me? Did it, did I get an, an expected end? What was my, what was the expected end of even being a part of that? That was to end racism and be treated equally. But think about it. Have we done any of that? Anybody else want to comment on, on that, on that uh, uh, make a remark about that? 
I'll jump in. Um, it may when you were sharing uh Grand Rising, good morning, everybody. Happy to be here. Well, when you were sharing that just now, and all, it made me think about my social my presence on social media. And, and that is one of the things I'm definitely passionate about sharing or engaging with people on or bringing things to people, people's awareness. But over the past, I say maybe three to six months, um, and now when, when these bad things happen, when people are attacked by the police or I don't, I never enjoy sharing those types of things because I feel like it's, I don't want to give those things a platform, but I do enjoy bringing pe people's awareness to some issues. And, and it hit me about three to six months ago. I, you know, I, I wasn't aware of these concepts uh, at that time, a knowledge that you and SRC are bringing to my awareness. And I'm so grateful for that. But it was that type of experience, you know, all this energy that I'm exerting you know, and, and what good is it really doing? And I'm, I'm also passionate about the fight, but I did, it, it came to my awareness three to six months ago. I was like, you know, what am I doing here? What, what am I really accomplishing? You know, and I decided to focus more on the good and more on the love versus the hate. That, so, yeah. that's, it. that's it. That is exactly right about that focus. And you use a very important word there. And that word is focus learning to focus on those things that we don't want. We're going to get into, because one of the things we want to do is, you know, we want to really get our audience to understand how focusing on those things that you don't want hijacks your expected end. And for the purpose of this conversation, and we're going to use the term that the book uh, uh, Reality Transurfing uses, and it uses a destructive pendulum. Now, a pendulum can be anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be destructive. It can be something that's very, very, um, you know, it can be a positive pendulum too. But in this case here, we're going to talk about destructive pendulums because those are the ones that get us on a different lifeline versus on the one that we want it to be on. See, a pendulum doesn't concern itself with where it gets its energy from as long as it can move. That's the only thing it concerns itself with. So if you even think about and go back and look at the politics that we just came through a couple of years ago, whatever, people see people say, oh, I don't understand why they doing this. I don't understand why, don't they, why they act in that way. What people are not understanding is that a pendulum, which is really energy, doesn't care where it gets its energy from as long as it can move. And I just mentioned that there are many types of pendulums, but we want to become, again, familiar with the destructive pendulums because they are the ones that causes individuals not to receive their expected end. I want to share my screen just for a second because I want to share with you what a, pen, a pendulum looks like. And, and, and just kind of discuss it for just a second. So let me uh, share my screen and I'm going to share with you this pendulum. So you see, uh, can you see this pendulum here, right? So now look at it. It is not moving, is it? It's just standing there. It's just in place. What, what would make this pendulum move by our brother Lavelle? Energy, thought. <laughs> oh, energy. Uh -huh. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. If you push this in, it doesn't matter if it's going to flow to the left or it's going to flow to the right, uh, frontward and forward. It doesn't matter. Only thing it cares about is who's going to push me today so that right. I can move. And that's what, we, that's what we must understand, guys, about a pendulum. Pendulums are nothing but energy. And what is thought? Thought is also energy, right? So therefore, it doesn't matter what type of pushing it gets as long as we can move. So you can be out there thinking that, oh, I'm in the fight for the better. But what we are really doing is we are just giving the pendulums energy. Now, um, there are all types of emotions uh, that pendulums use, anger, hate, whatever. It doesn't matter about the emotion as long as they can get that Emotion, and let's just go over to, to go through some of those emotions. It's like indignation, dissatisfaction, hate, irritation, anxiety, worry, depression, confusion, despair, fear, pity. All of those are emotions that 
a pendulum, pendulum, a pendulum will use. Now, in the same way that you can't see a hurricane, I was in Hurricane Andrew. You cannot see that hurricane. You can only witness the destruction it leaves behind. This is what the energy of a destructive pendulum does. Some might call it the devil. They do. They call it the devil. But the truth of the matter is, it's all just energy. And the more adherents, and those are adherents are nothing but followers, that feed the pendulum with their energy, the more forceful it becomes. Now, I know a lot of people wondering, oh, what is this whole thing about pendulums? What are you talking about? But just stick with us because we're gonna, we're going somewhere with this whole thing. And that whole, and where we're going is, is understanding that when we're giving energy to anything that doesn't serve us, we are giving our energy away. And if you think, when I think about all the energy that I have given away in my <laughs> lifetime, what I could have done with that energy. I mean, I could have done so much, so many more great things with the energy instead of giving it away. But as we go through this conversation that we have on the table, you're going to see it's going to be like a puzzle that when you first get open the box, that a puzzle is like in a thousand pieces. And you can't see the whole picture until the puzzle pieces have been placed where they belong. And when you put those puzzle pieces where they belong, then you're going to see and understand how a pendulum is really, really zapping your energy from you. So we're going to take this short break for a second. And after this short break, we will unpack and place those puzzle pieces so that you will begin to understand how destructive pendulums may affect your expected end. And then the SRC masterminds are going to share their understanding on how a destructive pendulum might use our emotions or reactions to something to affect that expected outcome and change our lifeline and hinder us from moving into the alternative space that we need to be in and that we were sent here to be in. So don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss this. Now, Sister Kina, how does a destructive pendulum, how, how will it, how does it use our emotions or our reactions to something to affect our, our expected outcome or our change? How does it change our lifeline? How does it hinder us from moving into that alternative space? And then I want you, as you talk about that, name that emotion, and then everybody else is going to kick in on, on that. Yeah, I, um, wow. It takes me back to um, September 11th, the whole experience that we had uh, when the the planes hit the building. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation about that that we won't get into today. But what we all saw and witnessed, you know, from our homes, from watching the news was terrifying. Um, and at that time, myself and some amazing women from my church at the time were preparing to go on a mission trip to Nicaragua. It was going to be my first time on a plane. I already was terrified of flying, said I would never get on a plane. So for me, when, when I when I think about it, that, that situation comes to mind. You know, that was a huge fear-driven pendulum that we all, you know, were experiencing. And, and it could have very well taken me, taken me off that path, off of my path for having that experience going to Nicaragua. It changed my life. I had such an amazing experience. I met a young man at a, oh, he's a boy at the time, at an orphanage, and we're still in contact today. So I just, you know, think back on had I allowed that negative pendulum, that huge, I mean, that impacted the whole world. So many people stopped flying. So many people canceled flights. My entire family was begging and pleading with me to not go on that, get on that plane with those crazy church folks. You know, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> what's wrong with y'all? Y'all getting on the plane, nobody's flying. You know, and, and and that was, it's just a huge example for me. Had I allowed the fear-driven negative pendulum to alter my choice to move forward with that trip, um, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. So I would say definitely a fear is one of the biggest ones. Uh, absolutely, fear. So, and fear... And, and, and the pendulum, it's, it's not attacking you personally. 
Mm-hmm. It really doesn't care about you. The only thing it really cares about is the energy that it can gain from you. And that, and that is simply the bottom line to it. And we give our energy to so many things. Like you said, uh, Sister Kina, you could have easily gave all your energy to the pendulum of, of giving your energy to some, some to, to this thing we call it, uh, it's personified as a pendulum, but we know it's nothing but energy. Energy is thought, uh, exists everywhere. So you're giving your energy over to something and you needed that energy for yourself to really, because you were already afraid to get on the planes, you needed that energy for yourself to even muster up the energy to even go on the plane, to most muster up that confidence to go on the plane. But a lot of times we will allow something to take our energy, take our energy to there is nothing left. Think about sometimes even when you get up in the morning and the first thought that comes to your mind is something negative. What happens? That's energy that you're giving away to something else. And after a while, if you keep on letting it get this grip on you, after a while, you have such a negative feeling that you can't do anything. You just want to sit around all day long doing nothing. Uh, Pastor Archer, do you have anything to add to that? Now, I, I, I looked at a pendulum as being just like the military itself because it uh, have groups of people to sign on and it always it competes against other parts of the service and there's rules that you have to follow in that pendulum and if you begin to go against it they're gonna kick you out <laughs> or, or beat you down one way or another because it is a destructive pendulum itself the, the military is in and and uh that's what i've experienced because i was in the military and now I come to understand that it was a great big pendulum because um, one time I was called a lifer because I went along with everything the military had done. And, you know, I was moving up in rank and there were always people that never wanted to move up in rank. And they had a problem because they were going against what we supposed to do in the military. So they were kicked out. Mm, so that's gotcha. a big big pendulum right there the military that's right that is a huge pendulum you're absolutely right and you see so you see a pendulum is nothing more than an energy sucking wave that has evolved independently and then began to subject people to its own laws and just like sister kina was talking about and you brought uh, uh pastor archie you know you have to be careful because the, every, listen src can be a pendulum but we we don't have any rules except that you can't come here, you know, like what happened this morning. Those types of things we we don't want that. But anything can become a pendulum. Anything can, but some are not necessarily bad. But all of them require energy. Every last one of them. Don't for, make no mistake about it. Each and every one of them requires your energy. But when a person becomes under the influence of a destructive pendulum, they lose their freedom and are forced to become a small cog in a large machine. Like prisons are pendulums. That's, that's what they are. And those who provide the destructive pendulum energy are called adherents or followers. So Mark Thomas, provide us an example of a, of a destructive pendulum's platform and how it can be destructive for those who it gets its hooks into. Like, for example, social media and all those things are, like uh, uh, Sister Kina said this morning, those are some of the pendulums that she has experienced. But let's, let's talk about that for a second, uh, Mark Thomas. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good to see y'all. Really sorry about that, the way we opened up today, but we're going to have that, I think, as we get bigger. Uh, yeah, pendulums. Pendulums are something that I never even really thought about that much until Anala enlightened me on, on pendulums. But I realize that I've always thought about them as energy, just like Anala was saying. Uh, and destructive pendulums, uh, you know, they can start in a real harmless way and, uh, and then take on a life of their own And uh, when as people get involved. And, um, you know, a pendulum was always swinging. So, I mean, you can you can see in our own society and through history where things come in and out of fads or uh, or people 
actually invent new ways to hate things or other, each other. And these pendulums gain energy and they lose energy. And it's the same with uh, every kind of, of uh, like Anala said, there's uh, actually, there's positive pendulums too that do positive things and there's benign or just neutral ones like, uh, I mean, you, you may pick up a book and, and get the energy from that book and you may, and you may resonate with what you read and then later on, you, you find something else and it distracts you. So that pendulum more or less just disappears. But uh, I mean, as an example, uh, I, I just kind of wrote down a real, an example that came to my mind um, for a destructive pendulum is, uh, this is kind of a story about somebody. So let's just say it's a mother of two who goes to the grocery store and, or let's say a father of two, okay? It might work out better. If there's a father of two who goes to a grocery store and is shocked by the prices at the grocery store, comes home and is pretty PO'd about it, about how much prices have gone up. So, uh, so he's already got negative energy. So he sits down in front of a TV set and he, and he sees a political ad. And what does the political ad say? It, it, it starts blaming people for his high groceries, for instance. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it puts faces and names to people to blame for, for this. And it, and, it, and, it, and, and it resonates with him because he's looking. I mean, he, he, he just doesn't accept that this is just the way it is, that he thinks there should be a reason or a person behind all of this. Uh, so. So this ad offers a reason, however misleading, as, as to why you are mad. It pulls you in by agreeing with you and offering solutions. And then, the, then this, this father, he becomes an avid supporter of this group. Or in other words, he adds energy to this, to this pendulum that is being perpetrated upon everybody. So you can imagine how he feels when years later, he is standing in front of a judge to be sentenced to jail for seditious, uh, seditious conspiracy, just like we saw in these uh, in these uh, one six people who got into so much trouble. You know, a lot of those people are, you know, obviously, I think a lot of them are just followers. They're just riding. They're just got on this pendulum and don't understand, really don't even understand how they got on it. But there they were. And there a bunch of them ended up in front of a judge. Some of them ended up going to jail. How could they have ever expected that just from high grocery prices? You know, all they wanted was lower grocery prices. <laughs> I love that. So did they get their expected in? No, they did not. <laughs> they didn't get lower grocery but prices. They? If they could have just identified this and understood what they were what they were going through, you know, and just understand how this energy works, they could have avoided the courtroom altogether. Absolutely. And, you know, and the other thing, you know, and I, I love that because you, you're right. Most people are unaware when a pendulum pendulum has hooked onto you, has pulled you from your lifeline. Now, it was one guy, and I'm glad you brought that up, Mark Thomas, because there was one guy, he had a house, he had a family, a wife, and, and he was on the television talking about how, you know, he had a great job. Remember that, that person, I think that we talked about him, Mark Thomas. He had a great job. Next thing you know, he was in Washington participating in all that stuff, lost his job, lost his house, lost his family. What did that do? That's, that pendulum pulled him, that energy pulled him from the lifeline he was supposed to be on and put him on a totally different lifeline. And that's what happens with us and pendulums. But the other thing that pendulums do is that it keeps... What, when, when, when you start to focus on that thing, for example, we, we say, uh, we, we talked about the high grocery, uh, Mark Thomas. And when you go in there in the grocery store and the prices are high and you're complaining about it and you're mad about them, you give your energy to the pendulum, what is going to happen? You're going to continue to see more high prices in the grocery store because that is the thing that you are focused on. When we are upset about the justice system. And I know it's going to be, it's very difficult because it was difficult for me to digest what I'm about to tell you. But when we are upset about something, the only thing we are doing is giving it more energy so it can grow bigger and control us. 
even the justice system. Everybody, and how long have we been complaining about the justice system? Has it, have we gotten our expected end yet? No, because, and, you, and again, guys, some of these people, as I know that Brother Lavelle would tell us in a few seconds, some of these people know about what we're talking about. So you think they care? They want you to continue talking about this stuff. They want you to continue protesting. They want you to continue giving your energy because what is that doing for them? In fact, this book I read on, uh, it was uh, Ann, uh, Ann Ryan, I think, it talked about in that book about they don't care about you getting upset. They want you to because the more you get upset, the more money they make because it adds to the justice system. It gets bigger that what we're calling unjust. How do we fix that? That's, you know, but first, people got to recognize what they're giving their energy to and decide to give their energy to something else. I think that uh, uh, Tamisha was talking last week or, or her and I were having a conversation about why are we continuing to fight for to be equal in a system that don't want us? And guess what that system is doing? It's getting bigger and bigger and we're getting smaller and smaller. Why? Because we're giving all our energy to it. Brother Lavelle, what did you have to say about that? Oh, good conversation here. That that pendulum, when it when it swings, it, it causes a um, major shift. And I have to go back with the point that uh, Sister Kena made about 9-11. That shift has caused so many ripples that are still affecting us today. And as you said, Anala, the, 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 the effect of it is so tantamount that we're still feeling it. And then when you take that and you compound it with other situations that have happened, you feel like you're under siege. You feel like you can't come out. And so you have to withdraw from all of the, of the craziness, the madness, because we see it every day. I've gotten to the point that I really don't like driving on the interstate anymore because of the mass craziness in, in the manner which people drive these days. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a heavy ripple effect and we just have to withdraw. And I think one of the things that's necessary for us to do is to go back into a place of uh, stillness from time to time. That's absolutely sure. right. I, I love that. Go back into a place of stillness. I like that. Um, Pastor Archie, what you, what you, what, what'd you say? Yes, yes. Uh, now, to me, I, I, I don't know if, if I'm being different than everyone else, but uh, one of the things that I see when you, when you talk about what is happening with people who were, were going against uh, politics, I believe that the, the, uh, the politics itself is the big pendulum because it takes people to push a pendulum. It takes in the regardless if you are mad or sad, if you you if you're being uh, positive towards that pendulum or negative toward that pendulum, it gives it energy either way. So you have to get on a different lifeline away from that. Just like war, war is a big pendulum because it goes against other things, and they fight against each other to show that you know, okay, I I got the best over here. And, and you don't have the best, just like religion sometimes, churches and all that there. A lot of times I didn't realize. So I started actually studying this here that pendulums are, are are things to me that 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 are big organizations a lot of time that we join into and we push it. We either push it or we decide that we're gonna get out of it, or because if we go against it, it it's gonna eat us up. So uh I was saying, I was thinking here as I was talking about that politics is the is the big pendulum, but within that structure, uh, you're either going to because you're going to be a Democrat or Republican or whatever, you're going to be going against each other, and either way, it causes that pendulum to move. The only way we stop a pendulum is to get out of it and get on another lifeline. That's right. Stop focusing your energy towards something that you don't want. For example. Do I want hate in my life? Do I want hate in my world? Do you want hate in your world? If you don't want hate in your world, 
If you don't want what people call it racism, you don't want injustice, why are we focusing on injustice? Because that's exactly what you're gonna get if you focus on it. You ever been on the on the road driving and you and and, and you mad at everybody because people are not putting on the signal lights or they're doing this and you're screaming at everybody that that doesn't do what you think they should do. You're focusing on that. That's a pendulum as well. That's energy being stolen from you. And what happens when you do that? What happens? You're gonna run to every run into every joker on the road that's doing something that you don't like. Everybody you see is going to be in in every opportunity you're going to get because what? That pendulum is going to continue to set up situations because now it knows how it can hook in and grab your energy. Listen, we're calling a pendulum, but there is a real energy out here. And we were fooled so long with thinking that that energy was a devil with some horns. But actually, it's a real energy out here that will suck up our energy to get you on a different life line. Now, I don't know what you call it. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, what you want to do, what we want to, what we want to get to everybody is not focusing on those things that you don't want and focus on those things that you do want because those things that you do want will become larger in your world. And, 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 and we really are talking about like uh, Pastor Archie, and like you said, Sister Ken and Brother Lavelle, um, uh, Mark Thomas, that we want to focus on, want people to start to look at what are you fighting? What are you resisting? What thing are you resisting? That thing that you're resisting is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And even your dreams tell you that. Think about this. <laughs> when, you, when, you're, when you're in a dream and you're fighting a monster, what happens? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in your dreams. So that is the point that we're wanting to make here is let's try something different. We haven't tried this yet. We haven't, no one, I don't know anyone except for maybe a few collectives are, 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 are saying, I'm going to try something different. I'm not going to get, I don't, I'm not going to focus on injustice. I'm not going to focus on racism. And we want to do this when it comes to wealth. You know, well, I'm going to focus on being wealthy. But we don't think about doing this when it comes to other things in our lives that can change our lifeline. We cannot move into an alternative space. The alternative space isn't going to be there for us when we're focused and have a narrow attention on this thing right here. We, can, we it, You can't get, well, as Abraham Hicks would say, you can't get there from here. Anybody else that want to uh, add in on that, want to want to chime in on that? Kena, what do you say? I, 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 uh, I'm sorry, Pastor Archie. <laughs> you, as you were uh, speaking now, I was thinking when when I mentioned the military, uh, from what I have have researched now, this is good information because I realized that when I joined the Navy, that it changed my whole way of thinking. It took away the freedom that I had, so I had to follow what that pendulum wanted me to do and and i think a lot of times we don't understand or i didn't understand how you you you're working in the pendulum because you're you're helping it you're giving it you're giving it some energy so uh regardless of what you think if you go in the military you you're gonna have to change and the pendulum changes you to where you got to follow all their rules and not what you want to do. That's right. And go back to what uh, Brother Lavelle said a few seconds ago. He said, sometimes we just need to be still. Sometimes, guess what? <laughs> if you're just being still, nothing can take your energy, can it? Sometimes we just need to be still and focus on where we want to send our energy at. Because if you're out there doing that, uh, 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 you <laughs> your energy is going all over the place. Didi, I see you've joined us today. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> okay, I want to be one hundred percent honest, right? Yes, we want. That. I know what I know. What a pendulum is? It's a tool that you use for divination with your higher self. I don't quite get what y'all mean by it, but so I'm trying to grasp it. Maybe I'll. Talk to uh, because you know, uh, Brother Lavelle is like my mentor, 
So I'll probably ice him a little later to explain it to me better. But I'm I know what a pendulum is. But in the in the way y'all putting it, I'm having a hard time understanding that. I understand. I'm so glad you brought that. I'm glad you said that. I'm a. I love when people are honest about what they need to understand. There's no. I want you to ask questions like that. So when you think about a pendulum, we're just personifying that. We're using that as a personification of really what it is. Is 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 something that takes your energy. Okay, let's let's use this for example. Say you are you went to the mall and you and your friends you having a great day. Everybody's all happy. But then you have this one person that look at you and go, oh, I, she just pissed me off. I just think da, 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 da. Now your energy was all up and high. You were high in your consciousness. I mean, you were there. But as soon as this one sister did this, man, you, that, that's a pendulum. That's that energy. Pendulum is energy. As soon as you do that, and if you focus on the energy that just came at you and go, huh, I don't know who you are talking about. That's what happens is the energy, you just, the, the pendulum grabbed onto your energy. So now both of you, now you just gave her a lot of energy because it takes a lot of energy to be upset. So you just gave that person all your energy. But guess what? If she did that, oh, look at her, who she thinks she is. But you looked at that and just looked at it as a script, a movie, like <laughs> ain't talking about me. And you looked another way and looked at something you really like. Guess what you just did? You just saved all of your energy. You can use that energy for thinking about what you want to think about, focusing on what you want to focus on versus what someone else wants you to focus on. Think about all these ads that we see on the television that tell us about getting this new drug that's going to do whatever, whatever. But what it does, that new drug uh, sends you into a, a lifeline when you go out and start uh, uh, evaluating, inspecting, and trying to figure out what this new drug does. You know, maybe a person has migraines. Well, let me go research migraines and let me understand how this all works and all da, da, da. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to start uh, moving into having more migraines and all that because those are pendulums that get hooked on you to that lifeline. The same thing, DD, that I was using for an example, if you, had, if you would have bought into that pendulum and joined in that conversation, Say, for example, y'all went on a part of your ways, but I can tell you this, when you go on down the mall or maybe when you get out to your car or when you get home, you're going to find some more people just like that because that energy, what that pendulum would do, is going to find more opportunities because now it knows how you can grab DD's energy. So it's going to, oh, I'm give you another opportunity if I can snatch your energy all up. And it just, and it doesn't care. It just uses the energy. That's all it does is just zaps people's energy away from them. Uh, Pastor Archie. Yes, uh, maybe maybe this could could help uh, my sister Didi. It might clear up a little a little bit here. Um, she knows what a pendulum is. It swings back and forth. Okay, like you say, we're personifying uh, when we say you know a, a person. Say for instance, a person uh, comes at you very mean and and nasty and trying to uh, uh, jump on you. What they are doing is trying to instill fear in you. Pendulums would do, they, it's, she's trying, or he is trying to instill fear in you because fear is, is one of the things that a pendulum wants to put in you. When, when you look at it, uh, it does not matter if you are afraid, but if the fear is associated with that person coming at you, it happened to me. And it, 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 instead of getting mad and wanting to fight, I took the lower role and acted as though I was going along with what this person was saying. And it suited the, the whole thing. And the thing about a pendulum they will place fear in you if you allow it to. And the other thing is, is, is that it, it's, it's not the person either. See, that's, what we, that's where we go so wrong. We... We get mad at the person in front of us, but it's really energy. Energy, what we've got to realize, energy is alive, guys. Thought energy is alive and well, but you can't see it. Just like you can't see the wind, you can't see energy, but it exists. So it's not the person, if, if Ken would say to me, you know, a, a dollar so and so, that's not, I mean, I got to know that that is not Kena doing this. That's not Sister Kena. That is the energy behind her and, and, and we what we've been taught so long that is the 
is the devil that we that that person got the devil in them. No, it's energy flowing all the time. And as as Pastor Archie said, and that that pendulum, because it fear, it can boy if it gets fear in you, it's got it's gonna it's got a lot of energy it can take from you because it takes a lot of energy to be to be fearful. It really does. Uh, Sister Kena, uh, Brother Lavelle, uh, anything you guys want to add to that? It's important to realize that with any situation that we experience in life is to keep that, I, I call it the happy medium, re regardless if something very beautiful or something very sad happens to you, is to maintain that happy medium. And if you notice about the pendulum, it's when we're uh, very excited about a situation or very angry about a situation, the pendulum is moving very quickly and rapidly and erratically. But when, when, but when we are in that state of mind or consciousness mm. where we have the, the control over ourselves, that pendulum swings very little to the right, to the left, to the front, to the back, circular, counterclockwise or other, which means that you then become the person who is in control. You become the master of your own of your own fate or your own destiny. And I think in a nutshell, that's what we're all trying to get to here is that we, we have to be in control of the situation and not allow these outer forces, okay, that are presented and sometimes even projected to us to control us. Because if it controls us, then we we are not in control of our fate. Absolutely, uh, Sister Kena. Yes, that was great, Brother Lavelle. And I I just shared with my daughter um, last night about the the full moon today. Today we have a full moon in Aries, and the example that I what I shared with her was Aries is me. Aries is forward. Aries is you know gonna move and make things happen. So um, be aware you know, over these next few days and just sit back and watch the storm. Don't be pulled into the storm because you'll have some people being pulled into this full moon of, of Aries energy over the next few days and, and may think irrationally or behave in, a, in an irrational or erratic way with this energy that we're dealing with. So, so when you said that, I thought of, I was reminded of what I shared with her and that's, we can use that with pendulum as, as well. When we see these extreme situations, you know, come into our experience, come into our awareness, we have a choice to be pulled into that and engage with it and exhaust ourselves and change our, our uh, energy. Or we can just sit back and watch it, watch it come and watch it go, you know, it's, it's power and, and detachment. And we have to be aware of what to associate with and what to detach from and what to just witness as it passes before us, So, I love that. I love the fact that uh, uh, Brother Lavelle and Tina, you guys brought up about, because you cannot, you know, energy is, energy is out there. The pendulum's energy, all that energy exists. But the key is how, what, what part of the, what role, in the play, do we want to play? What role in the script do we want to play? And that is so key because you can play the role of getting beat on and run down and giving something in all of your all of your energy, or you can play the role of being the one who's conducting the play. That is the key. What role are you going to play? And you can rewrite your script every time. So therefore, that's why I think that's so important what Brother Lavelle says, you know, be still for a minute. Sometimes you just got to look at the play, look at the script and go, oh, Pendulum, I see what you're doing now. Okay, I'm going to play with you, but this is the role I'm going to play in. And that's how we do that. The same thing with anything. Uh, when, you, when you're looking at the military, like uh, I think I saw a note down there that's not military isn't bad, but what is, going, what is your role going to be? Are you going to get in there and get beat all up and just, you are in the game with the uh, letting the pendulums use you, or you're going to play the game to win, like Jayla did. <laughs> Jayla played the game to win, I, and I let if she ever want to share that story, she can do that. But getting in there, understanding what the rules are, 
and then playing the game to win for yourself. Uh, uh, Lavelle, did you have anything else you wanted to add on that? Just, just bear in mind how pendulum swings and changes during the course of your life or even during the course of a day. You know, when you go into that stillness, actually you can begin to detect it even before it actually happens. That's been my experience, but you have to slow down. You can't allow yourself to be, as we say, caught up all the time, because if you do, you're going to miss something about yourself, which is needed to be known by you. That's absolutely right. Um, Mark Thomas, what, what do you want to add to that? Um, yeah, y'all kind of taught me something here today. Um, I, I always kind of wondered why your author, who, who's the guy that's the author there, Anala, for your book, uh, Transurfing? Uh, the author, it is, uh, the author for this book is, and if I pronounce it, is Vidam, V-A-D-I-M, Zeland, Z-E-L-A-N-D. V-A-D-I-M-Z-E-L-A-N-D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I always wondered, I was always kind of curious as to why you use pendulum. And from this conversation today, I, I, I actually get a better idea of why. Because uh, in my mind, what's a pendulum always doing? It's always, it, 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 it works on energy. So if you take the energy out, what's it doing? It's doing exactly what Brother Lavelle was talking about. It's being still. That's so that's its natural state. That's where it wants to be, right? Right. So, I mean, that's just, and so now I, that makes me, that helps me to understand why the author used uh, Pendulum as, as an illustration of what he's, of this, of this energy that you're talking about, Anala. That's all. Great. Didi, did you, did, did we answer your question? Yes, I understand a, a lot better. Uh, I feel like the pendulum is an energy. Is that kind of what is? It's a certain energy or a higher energy, and you got you got the choice to choose if you want to involve yourself in that energy or go with the flow of that energy. Is it something like that? Absolutely. You want to okay. go with the flow? Do you want to involve yourself? Or yeah. You want to rewrite the script? Okay, I got it. Because we're going to play in the game, guys. I mean, the game is out here. In this world that we live in, there is a, it's like a game. And that's what I'm having to realize. And that's why you can want to have fun with this. You know, we don't have to be all, we can have fun. We can like, ah, oh, I see the game. And you just rewrite the script. How do, what do you want your role to be? In this world, do you want your role to be one of poverty? Or do you want your role to be one of wealthy? Do you want your role to be one of sickness or do you want your role to be one of good health that's that is that and that's what it is we take life so serious but think about our the little children remember when we were kids how we played roles and and didn't work i mean and, and things just worked out but now we have been taught from our schools and our mothers and from the church and everything that you got to be this way and you got to do this we were not taught that life is, in fact, they would tell us life is not a game. That's what they said. Life is not a game. But yes, it is. It is how, what rules, what role do we want to play? Do we want to play the role of someone that's defeated, where the justice system walks all over us? Or do we want to play a different role? I choose to play a different role, guys. And that's what we're talking about here on SRC today is you choosing the role you want to play in this game we call life. And with that being said, I am now going to turn it over to uh, Mark Thomas so that he can take us out unless anyone else has anything they want to add to this conversation because I think this has been an excellent conversation. Anybody else? Nobody? Okay. All right. All of us here with SRC, as always, we want to thank the audience for being for attending today's presentation. Uh, I want to remind you about uh, what we announced last week, which was we, you can access SRC now. Uh, you can access the recordings, the videos on your Roku device or your Amazon Fire Stick. So you have to have those devices. You can't just go on your computer and uh, access the TV show, the streaming TV show that SRC is just starting. 
Um, we have, we're going to have our first episode up very soon. Is that not correct, Anala? Absolutely. So I'll tell you one thing, I'm realizing when you producing a television show and doing that, that's a lot different than just putting it on YouTube. Yeah, there's a little more to it. But once we, I think once we get good at it, we'll be able to post these shows within a week, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, if you have any problem though with this, uh, please email us your questions or comments at shifting religious concepts at gmail.com or any other questions as well. Uh, and as a result, um, so if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, go to shifting religious concepts.com forward slash registration and join us. Our next presentation is going to be on the 16th of this month and at 10 o'clock Eastern. So please join us for the second episode of our new series, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. And until then, we wish you all peace, health, wisdom, and love, of course. <laughs>